So this is my current gaming setup, and it's about to get to large and very long overdue upgrades. In this video, I'm going to be swapping out this respawn chair, which has been with me for, I think, over five years at this point. It's been a great chair, but I kind of just want some change. Also, I'm swapping out one of these 27 inch ultra gear monitors for a newer and larger ultra wide. I actually spend more time video editing for this channel than I do on gaming. So having a wider screen while super cool for gaming immersion will actually benefit my editing workspace a ton. Okay, but that ultra wide gaming experience is going to be lit. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Alrighty, out with the old and in with the new. Sorry chair, thank you for your service, but you know too much. Oof, look at that chunky box full of hopes and dreams. All right, let's get factual. So the monitor I went with is the 34 GP 63A from Ultra Gear. This 34 inch QHD monitor features a 21 by nine aspect ratio, 1440p resolution, as well as a 160 Hertz refresh rate and FreeSync premium. Inside the box is the usual stuff, user manual, HDMI and DisplayPort cables, and a new and so much improved power adapter. I hated the old power adapters. It bulged out around the prongs preventing you from fitting most other plugs in the neighboring outlet. Like, it was so stupid. This is great though. And crikey, this monitor also comes with a typical Ultra Gear boomerang stand. These Ultra Gear stands are massive. Hence why I will not be using it, but for the sake of the video, assembly is simple, requiring you only to twist two bolts on the bottom of the base into the bottom of the stand. No tools required. Meanwhile, the monitor is surprisingly light, coming in at only 12.7 pounds. The stand does an excellent job supporting that weight, and it even gives you plenty of height adjustments and tilt options if you're interested in using it. But it's still just too big for my taste. As you can see, it reaches out almost halfway across the depth of my desk, and this is a big desk. Also, I've been rocking a soundbar lately, and the stand's legs just don't accommodate for one. So instead, I'm bringing back the stacked monitor stand from Vivo, as each mount is compatible with a 34 inch monitor and a weight limit of 22 pounds each, which both my monitors fall way below. Now comes the fun part of guessing an appropriate height for the mount and trial and erroring while making minor adjustments until I get it right. Also, I'm realizing that the monitor is tilted downward and continues to do so after I level it straight up and down. I eventually realized the issue probably lies with that particular bracket as it was probably the one I used last time in my setup with the secondary monitor I had tilted down over my bottom monitor. And I'm sure you're wondering why I'm wearing the gloves for this task. That's because the hex key I'm using is soiling my hands with a greasy black residue for some reason, and I don't want to transfer that substance to my mouse pad, desktop, or my brand new monitor. At least it easily wipes off the metal monitor stand. Now with the bracket swapped and the stand back together, let's give it another try. And bangerang. Okay, monitor is mounted, but there's a problem. Yeah, this needs to go, because it's about to get blocked. Sorry, Govi hexagons, you're out. At this time, I don't have a plan to reuse these hexagons. Don't get me wrong, I love them. They just don't seem to fit anywhere in the space. And with light bars behind both my monitors, there isn't a need for these in my setup. Hell, I only hung these here coming down from a drunken stupor. Still got the leveling right though. I'll find a way to use these in a later gaming setup video. Don't worry. When it comes to taking these down, here's some advice. Gently pull the hexagon with continuous pressure. Don't tug. Since I've relocated these hexagons around the setup a time or two or five, I'm no longer using the standard 3M adhesive, which was some hardcore stuff. I'm using Scotch double-sided foam squares, which can still be destructive if not removed correctly. Here, I'm using a plastic putty knife at as flat an angle as possible. Gently push it underneath the wall mount. That's all that's left of that one. Just roll away the residue. Here's even another way to remove them. Loosen the tape's hold with the putty knife, then grab two sides of the mounting clip and twist. Okay, it's now day two of this little project. All the hexagons are down, the second monitor is up, and it's time to bring in the new chair.
Unfortunately, I didn't press the play button when I thought I had after I relocated the camera, so I missed out on the entire assembly process. But I'm here to assure you that assembly was incredibly simple thanks to the straightforward instruction manual. The whole build only took about 15 minutes. Let me drop you some details on the GT Player LR002 gaming chair while other me sifts through the packaging for parts. I picked up the LR002 off Amazon for a wild steal. It was retailing for $139.80, but also happened to have a promotion running for 35% off, plus it had a $20 off coupon to select. So I scored this chair for only $76.63. Prior to tax, I basically got it for half off. Oh, and prime shipping, too. <laughs> now, the listing states some confusing things, like how the material is leather or leather, which is supposed to be micro perforated polyurethane that replicates the feel and texture of genuine leather. The chair feels more like microfiber, which is exactly what I wanted because I got tired of my old fake leather respawn chair creaking every time I made a minute shift in the seat. All right, it's time for a change of scenery. Let's just say the chair is done. Poof. Nice. So let's talk briefly about this chair. I wasn't a fan of it at first as I found the seat hard, the lumbar pillow awkward, and the head pillow annoying. But after a night of gaming and breaking it in, I actually really like this chair. And I'm glad I got it, after initially regretting the purchase due to previously listed reasons. I like the color, I like the fabric, and it's comfortable for long gaming and work sessions, and it's incredibly comfortable to recline in when executive dysfunction kicks in and tells me productivity has left the chat. Let's now take a look at the rest of the setup. I like the look of my previous layout with one landscape and one portrait monitor, but I'm not gonna lie. I think this does look cleaner, and that's probably because the ultrawide monitor is the same width as both monitors combined in the old layout. Except now I don't have a second screen angled out from the side. And thanks to the Vivo stacked monitor stand, I can still have my soundbar and Fifine Low Pro boom arm below my monitor. And since the monitor stand is white, I was easily able to manage all my cables in this white cable sleeve, and it's barely even noticeable. As for the 34GP63A monitor, it is a VA panel, which I know not everyone is a fan of, especially for gaming, but I've been enjoying it. At this time, I'm not yet incredibly well versed on monitors, and my eyes aren't trained to notice hard to miss screen tears and ghosting. In my limited experience so far, this monitor performs well. Colors are rich and vibrant with inky blacks, and to my knowledge, I haven't experienced screen tearing or ghosting. Keep in mind, this model isn't the latest and greatest. It's been on the market for over a year and it retails for $400, though I got it on sale for $300. So I have no complaints. This monitor has been a definite upgrade for me, especially when it comes to video editing, which is so much improved thanks to a much, much wider workspace. I mean, look at the difference between Wondershare on my old monitor compared to when I move it down to the new monitor. It's crazy how much more space I have to work with, and I love it. So those are the newest updates to my setup. If you're interested in any of the products featured in this video, I'll include product links down in the description. And if you have any questions, drop a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more tech reviews and gaming setup content like this. Later.